during the chapter when I like when I came out was anyone else a little bit confused I was actually pretty confused when uh, when reading this chapter because I had that uh, unfortunate uh, like occurrence when you you know you see each character and you have no idea if they're like an older character or they're brand new so uh, during the chapter there was like this girl in the wheelchair and I couldn't really understand I think that's I think that's supposed to be this dude's uh, wife or something I, I don't really know like Yaga I, I couldn't tell if that's his, that's supposed to be his wife or his sister for a moment I'm pretty sure it's one of the two I think it's uh what's the guy's name Kusa Kusakabe I think his name is the sword dude he's got a uh, simple domain I think like I'm not gonna lie, like, usually, usually when it comes to, like, characters, I'll go try to look more into them, I can't remember specific ones, but, like, this guy has, has been so much in the background in a lot of scenes that it's just, like, I I don't have the level of want to look into, like, what this guy's doing, because, like, the only thing he really did in the last arc was not die, uh, I don't think he really did, <laughs> you don't think he really did a whole lot in Shibuya, but... And we find a little bit more about what was going on with Yaga in this chapter. And then, like, connecting to Panda and stuff. Because they're mentioning that the difference between the normal kind of cursed dolls that, like, people could make when, uh, they, like, they have a certain amount of energy they run off of and they aren't, um, they, like, they, they're more dependent on, like, the person that made them. Like, they're drained off them. Whereas the ones that he's made, like, with Panda are like fully sentient like they become like their own beings it's kind of like you just made a brand new character rather than uh you know like extensions of yourself sort of thing but it's funny also when i was looking at the chapter uh people were like saying <laughs> we were comparing yaga to uh to like christopher robin and i think that was uh i feel like that wasn't a coincidence i feel like that was the point because you see that like weird little door he came through under a tree somewhere like what was going for chris robin and then like this this weird little doll specific like this one specifically has a very strong level of Winnie the Pooh at least kind of set like he's obviously it's not the same design like it has somewhat to him like the little bear looking guy uh you know he doesn't have the t-shirt he's got a tie I guess instead and a speedo but like it was weird while I was going through this chapter because like it was all with characters that I'm not like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like lie about it like I'm not that familiar with um, I know they're in the series, and, like, Panda especially has been around for a long time, Yaga's been around. But, like, these were all guys that are, like, off on the side that I haven't given, like, a lot of attention or focus to. So, I think that just the general kind of tone from this chapter and, like, what happened means that Panda will get more presence within, like, the next arc, maybe within the Culling game. It'd be really weird to have this chapter and the stuff with Yaga and not kind of progress what he's, like, doing beyond this. Like, not do anything more with this character. But he's, like, hanging out with all of these, um... All of these kind of, like, you know, living sentient kind of cursed dolls instead. But he's, like, talking to him. You even see Kusakabe. And Kusakabe is, is talking to Pan. And he's like, don't tell anyone I helped you out. Uh, you used a bait to draw out Yaga. And the reason they don't like Yaga and they had beef with him is because if he wanted to, he could create, like, an army. But... That was just, like, an excuse. Clearly, he doesn't want to do that. That's just, like, a, well, he might be able to, so let's just get rid of him kind of thing. And the uh, the higher-ups, they've already shown they are taking full advantage of Satoru being in prison realm. So they're just getting rid of any problems that they, you know, see maybe exist in their direction that they can deal with. Like, they, they can't really go after Utah anymore. Like, legitimately, if, you, if they decided, like, yeah, we're going to try and go after Utah and get rid of him because we also didn't want him around. Yeah, they're all going to die. So, in their head, at least they're kind of, like, sending him in a direction that will benefit them, even though we know that's not the case after we saw, you know, he's just, like, kind of working for uh, for them in, you know, in a, a quote-unquote. He's kind of pretty much a double agent, essentially. But... Yaga is talking to them. You see, uh, like, uh, the, the, this part with the woman in the wheelchair. And it's, I, like, I couldn't tell if when the talking, when, um, when he's talking to him, if it was, when he's seeing his younger sister, if that was Kusakabe's sister or if that was Yaga's sister. If somebody can clarify that with me in the comments. Because he says that, um, when he's talking to him, there's, like, the, uh, the woman in the wheelchair and 
she's looking at the weird little bear guy and his whole thing when he's like, you know, aren't I a genius after he figures like, oh, is this, is this supposed to, this woman supposed to be my mother? And then she has like a flash moment where she imagines some kid doing the same thing. And I couldn't really get it like this talker kid. Again, this is one of those ones where I think I need to reread a chapter. But the problem that I was having, because usually if I have like a question, say I'm going to read, uh, like I'm at a part with, um, in, like any other series that I read, rather, that I'm a, a little bit more knowledgeable. Because for the most part, when it comes to Jujutsu Kaisen, I've read it through, I want to say twice. I want to say at least fully twice. And then, like, certain parts I've just kind of reread at random intervals if I just felt like, man, I really want to read, reread this uh, fight or reread this scene. And then, you know, I've watched uh, parts of the anime and, uh, for the where the anime covers at least. I mean, that's still like half the series. But I couldn't tell if this was one of those ones where I, I would have to go back and be like, oh, chapter area you know uh 40 something through like 50 something that would like have the information i was looking for that might give to this guy but i couldn't remember so any of the blanks that i have in just the general setup of this like if so many people can fill me in the comments i i asked on twitter if this woman was an old character or new just because like i said i i hadn't the memory of when exactly she you know where, where was she in the story prior to this they said she was new and I actually really like the scene where uh, the dude goes to confront Yaga and he takes his coat off and he's just has like a little more black shirt or black shoes and black pants and he's got just like the white shirt but he's looking jacked like he's not just he's not just muscular but he just looks wide and he just looks like a thick dude just like some really buff dude and he's going up against the principal guy and like when he showed up I didn't really think he can take him because we know that the principal dude is actually pretty powerful and it like almost immediately it goes to the next panel and like Yaga is just slashed up, he's bleeding out and the Yaga guy just has a, you know, he's got his broken guitar so at least like he, he put up somewhat of a fight and Yaga is just, it, it's, that's it for him, like he's, he's going, he's, there's not much a lot to him. We did find a little bit more about like how exactly the um, panda works. It's like you have three different cores uh, of cursed energy, and they they have to be compatible. But they'll like constantly. He says they constantly observe the other one, so they eventually become sentient and they just become like self-sustaining, which is pretty like a really interesting uh, concept for the series. And actually, probably my I would say my one like one of my favorites, if not my most favorite, kind of just like of Jujutsu Kaisen's own kind of powers and abilities. The only one I would say like that. I would put above it, like, just off topic, because, like, you have lots of cool stuff, like, lots of cool neat abilities, but I just thought this was a really cool one in concept of, like, just, you, yeah, you have these three, like, energy masses, and they'll, they'll essentially just watch and learn from the other one, and eventually just be, like, evolve to the point of becoming self-aware, but the only one I would say more that I would really, like, like, go for is Megumi's, like, way of setting up the, um, the ritual to summon like a high level shikigami and he can kind of like lock his opponent in there and i i still think that's my probably my favorite uh, technique in the series like that honestly actually i i'm gonna stick with that just because after saying it out loud again i do really like that one i thought that was just really cool for uh for megumi because it's, it's just like a cheat way to look around your abilities in order to have like a really powerful trump card but uh panda walks in he sees that uh yaga is just done and he, like, goes right past the, the old principal dude, just doesn't even pay any attention to him, and goes right to Yaga. And he's, he's like, oh, no, aren't you going to fight me? Don't you hate me? He's like, I don't have that. You know, that's a human behavior. I don't really have the same nature for him. But we'll just so you know, also, one thing that they can't happen is pandas do cry. Like, he's just sad and he's upset about it. But he also is aware he's like... Uh, besides you and uh, Masamichi weren't on bad terms, you know, talking to Yaga stuff. It's like, I bet you were, I bet you just acted on orders from higher up. So he knows that it's not Yaga, or not Yaga, the, the principal that wanted to do this. It was really, he was just following orders from the people that rank above him. And we've known for a long time that the whole Jujutsu tech people, like, they're all very corrupt. They, they're more about keeping themselves in power rather than actually doing the thing that's better for everyone that's for good for like the world and stuff and and for this all the individuals involved they're they're out for themselves pretty much um at this point so it's really weird it's like i didn't have a ton to say about the chapter like it was an enjoyable chapter like the only thing i'm wondering right now after this the setup like i do think pan is going to be more relevant it'd be really weird to give him him and yaga this chapter and not have um and, and just not have more going on with him after like not have panda involved in the next plot but 
I'm very curious as to whether or not we're going to, like, say, have a couple chapters checking in on other characters before we get back to, uh, before we get back to the calling game and stuff, because we haven't seen a lot of the smaller characters since the Shibuya incident, and, you know, similar to what we got here with, like, Panda and stuff. It's, it's gonna be really cool just to see if, you know, if we can get, like, just, like, peeks in to see what other characters have been doing in this time, like, what's going on with them. Is it their own personal stuff? Is it kind of related to something, you know, like with Panda, where the Jutsu Tech is? Are people related to, uh, you know, directly associated with, like, the pain and developments he's going uh, through now? So, we'll see on that. That's, like, a very interesting piece in the story right now. It It's just, to me, I'm... I'm like so lost on certain aspects of it because this was this is one of those ones where I think I just need to reread some parts. So if people can recommend like maybe some areas of manga that would help cover maybe some information like this, unless this is like just like brand new new and I'm just confused. But anyway, other than that though, uh, like I said, uh, it, there wasn't a lot that I really had to talk about, but I did like the chapter. Obviously, I thought it was pretty interesting. It's given more to Panda. I thought that was cool. Yago though got screwed over. Like he got killed off screen. Like, we just saw him get ready to fight, and then bam, next panel, it's over. He got he got the unfortunate, like, yeah, you, your death is going to be a bit sad, but I'm probably not going to show it with you kind of treatment. You know, it's, it's going to be more about the what happens for Panda rather than what happened to Yaga. Uh, but anyway, other than that, though, maybe the anime a lot, too. Uh, anyway, other than that, uh, thumbs up the video, but friend the like button, subscribe button, and uh, check out my other videos. But on that, I appreciate everyone's already subscribed. Thank you all for listening. Bye. Uh, thumbs up the video, but...